Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at some entry-level Super 8 camera options. Here's a question that I get pretty frequently, and I mean like super frequently. What Super 8 camera should I buy? First of all, that's a big question. And I mean, I don't know you and I don't know what you're trying to shoot. So it's a little hard a lot of the time. Super 8 seems like this whole separate thing, but it's like the same thing with most like cameras, especially for analog stuff, for film cameras in general. There's a lot of different ones from a lot of different manufacturers out there from over the years. And a lot of the times it kind of comes down to the core features that you want in your Super 8 camera, but also like how much time and money and effort you want to put into like shooting on the format. So I am going to talk about three specific kind of entry level, usually cheaper to find Super 8 camera options that I currently like based on like physically owning them right now. But before I do, I'm gonna load you up with information that I want everybody to pay attention to because that's what I try and do in these videos so that it's not just surface level suggestions, but also information that you can take and apply to your own life. In the past, I've talked about Super 8 as a format, but also in a really early video, I did do like a bit of a breakdown in terms of like what to look for when you're buying a Super 8 camera. And that's kind of like when you come to face to face with finding one, because that's my favorite way to buy a Super 8 camera, but that's not a possibility for everybody because people are watching from all across the world and a lot of the time, unfortunately, eBay is where you go to find Super 8 cameras. I don't really have like secret resources for finding like cheap working used Super 8 cameras. It's kind of like thrift store luck and eBay. And Super 8 cameras in general are just getting more expensive because it's becoming a bit more popular. In the past number of years, we've seen Super 8 film sales on the rise, especially in 2019 when they were like the highest they've been in years. So increased interest and popularity on this stuff, like all sorts of analog stuff in general, also equates to the prices on this stuff going up. For example, Katy Perry just put out a music video for us on Daisies and it was shot entirely on Super 8 and that thing's sitting at like 8 million views right now or 9 million views by the time this thing goes up. And I assume that probably at least a small percentage of people watching that video are thinking, how did they shoot that? Can I do that? And can I do that for real and not just using an app on a cell phone? And Super 8 cameras are film cameras, so they have mechanical moving components. And a lot of the times, even if you spend a lot of money on what looks to be a really nice Super 8 camera online, it is not uncommon for things to just break or stop working, even if they start initially working and things seem fine, they could just die out of nowhere. These things are from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, and if they're not used for a really long time, then the components inside of them can degrade. So spending too much money on a used Super 8 camera that isn't tested and that you're also gonna have to put time and money into buying film and processing and digitizing of that footage can be a big risk. Now there are some places that do restore or rebuild or like sell really nice quality, well-maintained Super 8 cameras such as Pro 8, out in California and I'm gonna talk more about them at the end of the video as well. But also in general, there's not a ton of resources for people out there who are able to repair like every kind of Super 8 camera. A lot of these ones, it's just easier ultimately to just buy a new camera once the one you bought dies. So here are three, count them, three Super 8 cameras that are not too expensive from manufacturers who also make other reliable Super 8 cameras and that I personally like because I've had them and I've used them or I've used models like them. So I'm gonna suggest things now. All right, the first one is this Yashica Super 800 Electro Super 8 camera. Yashica is just like a recognizable brand name in terms of like analog cameras in general. They've made some decent 35 millimeter cameras as well for photography, so they've been around. And in an earlier video, I looked at a camera that I previously had, which was the Yashica Electro 8 LD6. And this Yashica model also shares some similar features to that one. Unfortunately, that Yashica camera broke on me, but it wasn't a huge investment initially. And so when I came across this one, I knew that I liked the footage that I had gotten out of that one, and I was gonna take another risk on a similar model. So these Yashica cameras can usually be picked up for like not a ton of money. And uh, some nice features include the fact that they run entirely off AA batteries. They don't use a separate battery for the internal light meter. On the side, they also have some different frame rate options. So 18 frames per second is the standard for most Super 8 cameras, and that's what projectors will run at as well. Or you can shoot at 24 
four frames per second on these guys as well so that it is just a much friendlier, better looking quality of image for when you're getting it transferred to a digital format. And these ones do lack full manual exposure control. So I can't dial in the aperture of the lens manually when I'm shooting but it does have a really nice, reliable auto exposure system, which is set up to be able to expose properly for a variety of film stocks, including the modern ones that Kodak makes like 500 ISO color negative film. And not all older cameras can expose for that film very well. And these are solid. These are solid cameras. They got metal components. They're, they, they just feel good. They're pretty sturdy. I could probably drop this thing and it would be in good shape. So yes, first suggestion is look around for some Yashica Super 8 cameras cameras because they made some decent ones and specifically I would recommend this one which is the Super 800 Electro. There's also the Super 600 Electro and as I said the Yashica LD6 and LD8 are also very similar in terms of features for this one as well and I would recommend checking out. You can find some of these ones for cheaper than like a hundred dollars usually if you keep an eye out. Moving on! This is the Sankyo ES44 XL Super 8 camera. And this was my second Super 8 camera that I ever bought. And I think I paid about $8. Now it's nothing special. It is kind of bare bones and it lacks some features that I usually like to have on the cameras that I'm using, but these ones are not in high demand. So if you look around online, you can usually find this model or models very much like it on a pretty decent budget. Sankyo is maybe not as recognizable a brand name for a lot of people, but they made a bunch of Super 8 cameras and like not all of them are super great, but there are some nice little ones like these that could really help you get into shooting the format. So it definitely feels cheaper than the Yashica camera. And I mean, ignore the fact that I'm missing like the battery compartment piece on the handle here, but also again, this thing just runs off of four AA batteries. You just throw them in the handle in a little battery holder. It doesn't need another battery for like the internal light meter at all. It just runs off of AA's, which is super nice because getting those light meter batteries can sometimes be a little hard and a little expensive depending on where you are. The frame rate options are nine frames per second and 18 frames per second. So it lacks 24, but 18 is still fine. You can still get that footage digitized and scanned by labs and like transfer houses in order to get like your digital file to look at. And it does have a more limited automatic exposure system in comparison to the Yashica camera. It can only meter for up to ISO 160 for the film that you put into it. But what's nice about this one is that it has a full manual aperture exposure control dial on the side. So using information in the viewfinder, I can actually set the f-stop of the lens myself when I'm shooting the footage. And that's really nice when you're trying to like get a really specific exposure on stuff. So ones like these, definitely have their uses and you can definitely like learn more by using one of these and learning more about Super 8 exposure specifically. So beyond this model, I don't have a ton of experience with other Sankyo models, but looking around at some of the similar ones to this, they made some decent ones with some decent looking specs that again, maybe aren't as in such high demand as some of those Canon and Nizo and Nikon cameras that you see all the time on eBay. So this one, which is the ES44 XL, but also the 40 XL, which is very similar, or the one above this, which is the 88XL, all have some decent looking specs and some different features between them as well. They also made some sound Super 8 cameras later on as well. And a lot of the sound Super 8 cameras aren't necessarily the greatest because the main feature for them was the sound components, which are now useless. But ones like the EM420XL are also decent looking cameras if you're fine with like a bulkier camera. Don't pay extra money for a Super 8 camera just because it's a sound Super 8 camera because sound Super 8 film is obsolete. That's my public service announcement to you. All right, now everybody be cool because I don't want everybody going and driving up all the prices on these cameras that I'm suggesting either but I don't know maybe I don't know if I have that much of an impact anyways my final recommendation is the Minolta 401 XL. This little camera rocks. First of all, it's super light, it's super small, and it runs entirely off of two AA batteries inside the film compartment. You just pop them into the top here, up here, right there. That's all it needs. The two AA's power the motor inside for the film, and they also power the automatic function of the light meter as well. It doesn't have a ton of features, but again, these are entry-level cameras. These are just meant for you to be able to get out there and start shooting this wonderful little format so that maybe in the future you can expand and invest in higher end ones. But this little Minolta camera 
is like really nice. It's super light, you can throw it in a bag. I've taken it to a couple of weddings with me and it's easy enough to just kind of like have around. It's got a little macro focusing option on the side here, which is just a switch. Again, it's got like a zoom lens like all the other ones do as well and focusing on it is just normal. The functions on the side are, are really basic, okay? It only shoots at 18 frames per second. It doesn't have any frame rate options on it besides 18 for when you're running the film through it. We can get perfectly fine looking footage when you're shooting 18 frames per second on Super 8. You'll get three and a half minutes out of a single cartridge when you're shooting, which is like a decent runtime for this stuff. But even though it doesn't have frame rate options, the 401 has a built-in intervalometer on it, which means that you can do Super 8 time lapses on here and like animation stuff and like cool things. And you can set how often it does it. So you can do like a time lapse over like a long period of time with this thing. This thing has treated me well and it's really nice to just kind of carry around when it's like nice and bright outside so that I can shoot some things like 50 ISO color negative film. And a friend of mine told me that it looks really nice on the new Actachrome as well, just on automatic for the exposure. But if you don't want to leave it on auto, again, it has a little manual control on the side. So really that means that you can shoot anything that you want in this. So that's my gift to you. The Minolta XL401. I really like this camera. It's a nice little camera. My recommendations again are this one, the Minolta XL401. There's also the Minolta XL501, which is just very, very similar. Again, it's like essentially the same thing, maybe a bit different for the lens. There's also the Minolta Autopack 8 D6, which is a cheaper equivalent to the much more expensive D10. So I would definitely say that those are models that are worth picking up. So these are three Super 8 cameras that I like and that I would recommend and also recommend similar models to them from the same manufacturers. And in general for Super 8 cameras, there are some hidden gems out there. So don't just become really reliant on Canons and Nikons and Nitzos and like the higher end ones just because they have a high price tag and a really recognizable brand name attached to them. For shooting Super 8 and for shooting some of this stuff in general that is pretty expensive and a big commitment, you should ease yourself into it. Like, like getting into a, a hot bath. Even though I like these models and I've had luck with all these models, you might buy the same ones and go through like two or three broken ones before you end up like locking into one that works all the time for you. So it's kind of a trade off because also any money that you save on a camera is more money that you can put towards film and processing and transferring and just lab fees and stuff like that so that you learn more about it and experiment more with the film. And just because somebody has one on eBay that's in nice condition that's selling for $400 does not necessarily mean that once you get it, put film into it, power it up for the first time in 30, 40, or 50 years, then that thing is still gonna be running and that you will get $400 worth of your money out of it. And do your own research too. Just always please, please do your own research. I go through some links and, and resources in the description. My favorite website for all of this stuff is a website called Film Corn. They have a huge Super 8 database for cameras that break down based on different brand names. And that's where I find all my information and specs. And it, you just go over there and check it out thing in the description. So check out these three if they sound interesting to you. And I hope that all of you guys find your perfect Super 8 camera and get into this format and enjoy it as much as I do. And as always, don't buy expired Kodachrome Super 8 cartridges on eBay. They're too expensive and they're a thousand times more trouble than they're ever, ever, ever gonna be worried. Trust me. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. And I mentioned Pro 8 millimeter. They're a lab out in California. They've been around for a long time, but if you're interested in buying Super 8 16, getting stuff processed and digitized and you know, use the link in the description and consider going and checking out Pro 8. They also like rebuild and restore and reinvigorate some of these older Canon Super 8 cameras that are out there. So if you're tired of the eBay scene and you're looking for something reliable and you got like a big shoot coming up and you have the resources, then I would definitely recommend checking out Pro 8. Anyways, thank you. Uh, there, there's the link in the description for the Patreon as well. You can head over there, you can check that out, you can support this thing so that we can do more of this until the end of time. So thank you so much for subscribing and unsubscribing and liking and disliking and commenting and not commenting and I will see all of you guys soon.